Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. Okay, so today we are focusing on part six of our extended range of fashion illustration tutorials in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, just to recap, so part one of this tutorial, we looked at how to create these faces by simply going online, finding black and white portraiture, tracing around it using the pen tool, and then obviously adding color. We then looked at makeup styles, so obviously adding different shades and colors to create different makeup concepts. And then we looked at creating uh, a hair piece, and obviously we have a range of different hair pieces here that obviously then go and fit, uh, let's say, that face. And so for example, you can change the style of this person quite dramatically just by simply changing the haircut. And so this is kind of what we focused on. So then we obviously looked at creating, uh, let's say, fashion templates or body illustrations. As you can see here, we have a whole range, once again, taking lingerie imagery online and then tracing around those figures. And so the idea is that we're building up this like library or template system where you can simply pick the face, pick the hairstyle, add it to your body template, and then you have a whole range of various different model or fashion templates you can work with, and they're all your own. So in the last, uh, let's say, part, which is part five, we um, created fashion templates which we could then obviously print off and um, we made them very very faint or transparent made them 20 percent printed them off we then started doing some freehand fashion illustration and then we brought them back into adobe illustrator and we started to trace off those fashion illustrations as line art so now we have almost like our finished illustration um, but just black and white and so in this uh, episode or part six we're going to show you how to start adding print color texture to really bring these designs to life um, <laughs> these illustrations are quite crazy um, in terms of their concept just because we wanted quite a lot of detail to show you um, you know how much or basically how to put in different textures and colors if we were just to stick with a simple dress then it would just be one very simple concept so this is why these are absolutely crazy illustrations or fashion designs um, so yeah these fashion illustrations are a little bit crazy but essentially once again it is all about creating lots of detail uh, to show you how to like add all this texture detail etc okay so let's actually start let's begin so before we actually start adding um, colors and textures and print to our illustrations which we have in front of us here from part five I've just basically gone online um, I've done a little bit of looking around and I found various prints on Pinterest, including some, let's say, fabric choices here. It's like this almost like waffle or padded jersey. We also have this gold lame, and we also have a few colors here which have been derived from these, let's say, prints. I just need to do a bit of a disclaimer. These are not my prints whatsoever. Um, we will not be producing these garments. We will not be doing anything with them. This is just purely for demonstration purposes. So ideally, you would need to create your own prints, um, or let's say, yeah, your own prints to add to your fashion illustrations. But once again, this is purely for demonstration purposes to speed up the time. I don't have time to actually create these prints myself or one similar. So it is all about just demonstrating this using existing prints online. Once again, we will not be making any of these garments. Uh, it is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so let's begin. The reason why we basically grab these prints online is because I want to essentially drag and drop these into my, uh, let's say, garments. And I'm going to show you how to do that with various clipping masks. But before we start, I want to show you a little bit about swatches. So swatches are absolutely uh, fantastic when it comes to Adobe Illustrator and adding color or texture very quickly. So let's just go to our small selection tool up here in the top left corner. If I click on this like jacket, for example, um, I want to essentially fill that with this, but it's a very difficult situation. You can't just simply click on that and then click on this. It'll only pick up the color. So you can very simply and very easily just simply click the outline of whatever item it is you want to fill with and then just go to your color palette and then obviously add a color. I'm just picking colors at random now. So this is the very basic, simple way of adding colors to your fashion illustrations. Um, and if you prefer that concept, you can do that. It's absolutely, you know, absolutely fine. However, we can actually create swatches from things that we find online, such as this, uh, let's say, waffle jersey here. It's very simple. Just go up to your right-hand side here, go up to your swatches palette. It should be a lot of little squares. And just open it up. What I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to click and drag that onto that palette. You see how we have that, blue, uh, that green plus sign? Essentially, what it does is it has added that to my palette. In fact, let's just go back. Let's just do that again. And as you can see, it's just been added here. So now, if I click on, let's say, this jacket here, I want to make sure that my fill has been selected. Okay, so you want to make sure that this one's on top. I'm just going to click <coughs> on that little icon or that little swatch that I just added. And as you can see, it's automatically added it, which is fantastic. And I can do this with pretty much all of them. So for example, let's say, okay, let's have this one. 
this top as well, let's also go for this top. So what I'm doing is get my small selection tool, I'm clicking on the area I want to use, or you can click on the outline for example, and then I hold down my shift key to click on the other items. This queues up the selection, so you can hold down the shift key, you can queue up. If you weren't to do that, you just clicked here and then clicked here without holding down the shift key, you see it swaps. So I hold down the shift key to queue up that selection, and then same for this one, click, and then all I have to do is simply click on that palette up here and it just adds it to it really quickly, really simply. So it's a really handy way of creating quite interesting illustrations uh, using swatches. And we can do the same for the gold lame as well. So I'm simply going to click on this, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to take it into my palette here and as you can see it's just been added. I'm actually going to delete these because these are my old ones. Yeah, and as you, can, you can just delete these as well, just simply click on it and just hit the delete key also or the delete icon down here. So for the Gold Army, all you do is simply click it, drag it in to add it, and now it should be available. So, if I zoom in, let's go for, let's try these little wing tips. What else should we add a bit of Gold Army to? I think we have a little panel down here. We have loads actually, let's have a look. So all of these little trims, I'm just simply holding down the shift key of my small section tool and just clicking all those little elements. Like that. Same with this one, select it. What else? Let's have a look at the lab as well. So I'm just going to simply select these elements, my small selection tool, just like this. There we go. Let's do this one as well. Once again, I'm still holding down my shift key. And I can simply just click. And now we have gold lame in all those little places. Okay, so really, really simple. I might actually on the lab not want to have that line art, but it's fine. Let's just click on that first of all. I'd actually want to remove that line art. So what I can do once I've selected my areas and added that gold lame fill, I can just simply go back in, hold down the shift key, click all these elements. There we go, click all that. And then I can just simply go to my line tool here. I'm just going to see how you, if you click on it, it moves to the top. I'm just going to click on it and then delete. And there we have we go, much nicer. And let's remove that one as well. Okay, so that shows you how to use swatches and essentially how to add it um, to your collection. And you can do this just simply by, once again, selecting and then queuing up your selection. But, uh, so let's keep, so what, okay, so what happens, what we could do essentially is drag this print into our swatches palette and see what happens. Let's see if we can actually do this. So the print is in there. Let's say I want these trousers to feature that print. And if I click on it, oh, sorry, wrong one. You wanna make sure that it's always your fill over here. Originally it was my line, but we want to go to our fill. We want to go to our swatches palette and let's click on that print. And so yeah, it pretty much fills it, which is looking really good. It also depends on the size of your swatch as well. So if I take this swatch here and I just copy and paste it, and then let's say, let's just transform it down. So let's make it really small. The smaller you make your swatch, is essentially the size it will be on your pattern. So if I click on this element again, and I just click on this one, you can see that my print is far smaller. Unfortunately, because this, the bottom of this is lighter than the top, it doesn't tile very well. So ideally, you probably want to use something a little bit bigger, such as this. So what you could do, if you know that you want this print to fit over this entire area, I would basically drag it to that space, and then you could always make it bigger or larger, you see, just to cover that area, and then you know that print's gonna fit inside that space. Okay, so that's really interesting or useful as well. Your swatches can be various different sizes. If you want that waffle jersey to be slightly smaller, you can simply take this element, copy and paste it, make it far smaller like that, drag it into your swatches palette. Hang on, where'd it go? Let's take that, let's drag it into our swatches palette here, and then I can click on this element again, and then just boom, and you have a much smaller waffle. So it all depends on the size as well. So various different options there. We could possibly use that little smaller waffle for our gloves over here. Okay, so we're slowly building this up now. So let's go for, let's try colors instead. So as I said, we had this little color palette on the left-hand side here. So I'm gonna get my small section tool. I'm gonna click on this really high-rise leotard and obviously the sleeves that come with it. I'm gonna zoom in. Also, if you're not familiar overly with Adobe Illustrator, there's some tools here that are really important. If you hit Command or Control on your keyboard and then plus, 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 you will zoom in and minus will zoom out. Okay, so that's really handy to really getting close to the details. If you hold down the sh uh, space bar on your keyboard, click and drag, it allows you to move around the page really easily without having to use these ridiculous scroll bars. Okay, right, so sorry, let's go back. I'm just gonna get my small section tool. I'm gonna click on that element, click on this element, 
and this one. I'm holding down my shift key to queue up those selections. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my color. So how do I get my color into this area here? Well, it's really, really simple. All you do is with these items selected, go to your eyedropper tool, which is just over here. It's also I on your keyboard. Click on that. And then whatever you click on, wherever the color, whatever the area, whatever, it will basically fill it. So it will pick up the elements of that line, which is really handy. So let's just go for that sort of like olivey sort of like green color. Let's go back. There we go. So that's our green body created. Okay, let's go for the gold lame buttons. So I'm going to speed this process up a little bit because obviously I'm explaining the same thing over and over again. What's really important is, let's say we wanted to create a placement print. So for example, we have these trousers here. That's wonderful. But what if we wanted to have a mirror image? In other words, we, the center front scene, we wanted to mirror image that print. At the moment, we're using this lovely swatch. But I don't really like that. I want to have a mirror image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply remove that fill. So I'm going to select that item and then I'm going to go over here and you see that one's on the top. I'm just going to hit the red and that will remove it. Oh, and she's a little bit naked. So hang on. Let's just add a bit of color there. Well, not color, but let's just add a bit of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this print here. I'm going to copy it because I want to keep my existing one. It's a big section tool. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. I'm then going to go, I want to have this mirror imaged. Okay, so let's copy and paste it again. So we now have two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this item when it's selected. And I'm going to go transform, reflect. Click OK. So now I've reflected the wrong way. Hang on, sorry. Right click, transform, reflect. And we want to make sure it's across the vertical axis, not the horizontal. And click OK. I'm then going to move that to here. And as you can see, we now have this really beautiful sort of like effect. We could also do it on the opposite side. We have this really interesting sort of like little peacock feather type thing. So now we have these both selected. Or sorry, now we have this reflected. I'm just going to simply get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this one. Hold down the shift key to queue up your selection. Click on this one. I'm just going to go object and then group. Okay, so now it's one item, which is brilliant. I'm going to make sure it's the right height. So at the moment, I want it to fill this trouser, which is looking good. But also, I want to make sure this is sent to the back. So I'm going to go with this selected, I'm going to go Object, and I'm going to go, where is it, uh, Arrange, and then Send to Back. And the reason why is because, you see this panel here, which is my fill for my trousers. This must always be on top of whatever you're going to use as the clipping mask. So we're going to create a clipping mask to essentially cut this shape from this printed background. So it's really simple. What I'm going to do is get my small selection tool. I'm going to click on this piece. I'm then going to click on the back piece. So they're now selected together. So click on the front, hold down the shift key, click on the back. I'm going to go right click, make clipping mask. And there we have <coughs> our print. We've actually lost our outline because when you create a, a clipping mask, it removes that, um, let's say, line art. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that edge. I'm going to go to my line color here. I'm going to make sure it's black. Click OK. And I'm also going to up it to about three. Let's see, has that worked? Yes, so we now have that lovely line art as well. <coughs> but as you can see, it's not quite, this center point is not quite on the center of my trousers. So what I'm going to do is with my small selection tool, I'm going to click on this element, which is on this side. So I'm clicking within this clipping mask. I'm actually clip clicking the print. You can see it behind it. I'm going to hold down my shift key, click on the other side. So we now have both of them. And with my arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm going to nudge it. And as you can see, it's just nudging over to the other side. If you want to speed up this process, hold down the shift key, and it will do much larger nudge increments, you see. You can even move it up and down. You want to make sure you don't obviously lose the bottom area here. So let's move that down. So that is essentially our print. Um, so it's not filled. For example, if we were to just, well, that's our swatch. Oh, sorry, wrong one. We need to go to line, sorry, co uh, fill color. That would just be our print. And look, you can see it's got a bit of an odd edge here, but essentially this is how you make sure that it is basically symmetrical. Oh, it is, yeah, it is mirror imaged and it's in the placement that you want. So you can either use this swatch concept where you have no control over how that tiles, um, or you can place it in using a clipping mask and you have full control over that placement. So for example, if I wanted that over there, you know, you could do whatever you want to. You could even rotate it like that. So you have a lot more control with this situation of the whole clipping mask thing. OK, so essentially that's all we really do when it comes to um, adding, uh, let's say, print and color, etc. But I'm going to go through the whole process and add all this as well. So you know what? I love this print. I think it's really gorgeous. Let's copy that. 
let's paste it over here and let's do another clipping mask concept. So what I'm doing is I want this to be mirror imaged because I quite like this edge here. So I'm going to I've just simply copied and pasted it. I'm then going to copy and paste it again. I'm going to right click, transform, reflect, make sure it's on the vertical, click OK. And I'm just going to simply click that top point and drag it into place. And now we have this beautiful mirror image. Get my big section tool, click over both of them. I'm going to hit Command G to group, or you can go to object and then group. I'm then going to place it over my garment, just like that. I'm going to send it to the back, so object, arrange, center back. Also, these are shortcuts here, so I know that Shift, Command, and Open Square Bracket is a shortcut to send that to the back. So Shift, Command, Open Square Bracket, sent to the back. I can now align it to make sure. So you see this little red line here? That's the center of that mirror reflect. And you can see that this is the bottom, so I need to move it ever so slightly further down. If it's a little bit too short, you can always click and drag up click and drag out and it should proportionately increase and let's just move that center seam in there as well but also let's say that my garment is that's not quite the center of it possibly I want the center to be slightly off I could always go to my rotation tool with the selected click on this point rotate and then as you can see my center front is more in line with the actual garment length or her posture and so when I've got that, let's just simply click on my illustration here, my outline. I'm then going to hold down the shift key, click on this element here, right click, make clipping mask, done. But once again, we've lost our line art. So let's just click on the outline of this and let's just make sure that that is black. Click OK. And then let's up the stroke to about three. And there we have it. Lovely. OK, so let's just keep building. Let's take this panel, this panel. Let's also take this one, this one, this one, and this one. And let's add, let's go to my eyedropper tool and let's add a little bit of pink to that. Okay, so we're getting there, which is looking good. And also we just want to make sure that we have that black fill. Click OK. Let's take that up to, let's say 1.5 because they're details, they're not actually finished. Uh, let's say the outline of our garment. Let's also take this one and this one. Go to the eyedropper tool and I can, you know what, I can just select that. There we go. Okay, those eyelets probably need to be a different color. We can probably have a gold lame for those. So just select them. If, for example, okay, so if I use my big section tool, I click on this, you can see that they're all, all of these objects are grouped. And so, for example, if I were to then add my swatch to this, everything would go gold. So hang on. Which is fine, but it's not great. So essentially what you need to do is make sure that things are all ungrouped. So you just simply, so let's click on this rivet. It's all joined to all of these items. Let's go object and then go ungroup. This is also shift, command and G. So if I click back on, luckily they're not grouped anymore. So that's fine. But if they were grouped, you could just simply keep clicking shift, command G. So let's just simply grab that rivet, hold down the shift key, grab the other rivet, and then let's make that gold lame. Great. Let's, I think those things, those straps are fine. Okay, let's head down to our shorts here. Okay, so we want this print essentially to be in uh, our shorts as well. So what I'm going to do is instead of having to go to all the trouble of having to copy and paste this and like mirror image it, I'm just going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to click here as well. I'm then going to go Command C and Command V to copy and paste it. There we go. We can even, if we get our big selection tool, we can even then just rotate it. Let's send it to the back. Like so, I can then see my center front seam, like that. Let's zoom in, and then I can simply just click the outline of my shorts. So with these selected, just hold down the shift key, click the shorts, and then we're going to right click and then go make clipping mask. Boom, there we go. Once again, we lose the outline, but that's fine. We can always just up that to be three. There we go. So always make sure that your line art is intact. Okay, let's have a look. Same with this one. Okay, so for the time being, we've actually got a rib involved here. So if I click on this and try and fill it, it works. <laughs> okay, but not very well. So essentially, we don't want to do that. If we have a rib on top of something, and you'll understand how we did these in part five, what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to click on that rib, and you can see by see that line is appearing. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go Object, Lock, Selection. And then I'm going to click underneath. And then it gives me the option to fill here. So we're basically just locking that rib away so we don't affect it. And we're looking at the color layer underneath. And I can just simply go to my eyedropper tool and let's just uh, click on this color. Now, you see how that's got a thick border here? Well, if I just simply click there, okay, no, that, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's fine. Simply uh, click 
that kind of knocked me off course a little bit because it was meant to do something else, but that's okay, it's fine. So this is our color layer, and what I'm going to do is simply get our eyedropper tool, click, and then we have the color. Okay, what next? Let's have a look. Should we do these little gloves here? Okay, let's do the gloves. So I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to hold down shift key, select this item. I'm then going to go to my swatches palette, and let's just put in... What should we do for this? Let's go for that really tiny waffle print. Although, to be fair, that's no longer in my swatches palette. So let's go over here. Let's grab that. Let's drag that in, because it's my smaller version. Click, click, and then let's go to that smaller waffle. There you go. So it's much cleaner. Let's also grab these. Let's make these gold lame. So hold down the shift key, just select these, and then let's go to gold lame. Great. What's next? Okay, her shoes are blue. Let's just simply, okay, everything's selected here. So once again, if this is grouped, I don't really want to ungroup all this because it's the model template. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my small selection tool. And what that does is that picks up the smaller element inside the whole element. So the big selection tool selects everything in a group. And the small selection tool selects just small elements in that group. And then I'm just going to simply add that color in there. Looking fab. Okay, so I think she's pretty much done. Let's move on. So let's go for this lady here. So once again, we have this print. We can either create a swatch from it. Let's see if that works. And then click on this and then go to the swatch. But once again, it's not a very good tile, so I'm not going to bother using it. Instead, I'm going to use a clipping mask. If you wanted to, and this was your print, hopefully you'd have it in a full repeat. So essentially, you would drag your finished artwork as a full repeat into the swatches palette, and it would repeat it beautifully. But once again, you don't have any control over the direction. So for example, this is going directly vertical, while really you probably wanted it to go with that center front seam. So for this, we're going to use a clipping mask. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. I'm then going to transform reflect. I'm going to hit copy. So we have a mirror image, just like that. In fact, you know what? I love these two birds being next to each other. So let's group that. We can then, let's, you see how I'm moving it and that red center front line is there? Let's then just send it to the back. Once again, that's object, arrange, center back, or shift, command, and open square bracket. So let's just click on this. I'm going to go to my rotation tool, just over here on the left. I'm going to click on that crotch point and I'm just going to rotate it in. And then we can also move it around. So if you have your on your arrow if you have it selected, just hit the arrow keys. You can also use the shift and arrow keys to move it around in larger quantities. And then what we do is let's click on this short panel. Okay, at the moment this is all grouped together. So we don't really want that grouped. Let's go object ungroup. Click it once again, it's still grouped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shift command G. That should ungroup it all. There we go. So you basically keep on pressing shift command G to ungroup. And so I've got this, uh, let's say, short layer. I then also hold down the shift key, select my back layer here, and then we're just going to go right click, make clipping mask, lovely. Make sure that your line art remains. Let's make it three, and there is our shorts. But once again, that's not quite on the center front, and also it's quite big. So I'm going to get my small selection tool, I'm going to click on that element, hold down the shift key, click on that element. Let's try and get it a bit more centralized. So they're a little bit big. So what you can do once it's inside, and you can preview it, if you hold down, so if you go to your big section tool, you'll see that you have these little side bits. And that allows you to scale it down whilst it's still inside that clipping mask, which is really handy. So there we go. Maybe I want to change the rotation of this ever so slightly. I just want to get those birds almost lining the hem of those um, shorts. So that'd be a placement print, let's say. OK, looking good. OK, so next we're going to work on the top. So once again, same thing. I could just have a look. Let's go and fill that with a swatch, but it does not look good. You could just click that just to trial it, you know, see if you like the concept or not without having to go through the whole motion of using the clip mask. It just gives you an impression of what it might look like. And then if you do like the concept, you can obviously then just let's grab these, copy, paste. Let's also copy and paste some more in up top. We can rotate it round. So we're doing a full proper tile here. So let me do that again. I'll explain. I'm just going to copy this piece, paste it here. Let's just make sure it's horizontal or it's at least 90 degree angle there. So I'm just rotating it. There we go. So I'm just going to simply go right click, transform, reflect, copy. There we go. Let's move that in. Let's get that nice center point. I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to right click, transform, reflect, and I'm going to go horizontal. So we're going up this time, hit copy. And then let's move that up to the top. 
and there we have our really repeated print and it's because it wasn't exactly perfectly um, it wasn't exactly 90 degrees there so I'm just going to move these panel pieces in ever so slightly there we go that's not too bad group you can do a far cleaner better job than I have but that gives you the concept and the reason why I'm doing that tiling is because I want to keep the print exactly the same size but it has to fill this space you see so I'm just going to simply once again big selection tool click I've grouped it so once you've got all those individual pieces you see just want to select all of them hit command G to group them so it's one element and then we're just going to drag it, drop it. We're then going to send it to the very back. So once again, um, <coughs> Shift Command Open Square Bracket. And then we can just get our placement right, looking good. I can click on the outline of my, uh, let's say, jumper, whatever it is. And then hold down the Shift key, click the background, right click, make clipping mask. And there you have it. Once again, make sure the line art's looking good. So three points. It's black. That's brilliant. Okay, and also there's one thing to mention. If you have been a bit, if you've not followed the last tutorial in detail, you see how we have all these like little lines here. So what could happen is when you add your clipping mask, you might find that it appears to be on top in the layers. You see, you might lose all of that information, which obviously causes your illustration to look a bit not very nice, and also you lose these elements as well. So if for some reason when you fill it, this happens, it's fine. Just simply click on that element and then go Command. And then you're going to go down through the layers, the so whole command, and then you're going to do open backspace, and you're just simply sending backward. And it might take you a while. So I'm actually, you can just hold, you can keep that held down and pressed, and it should cycle down through all the layers. If you've got a lot of layers, it will take a long time. Hopefully this won't take too long. There's a lot of layers. Ah, there we go, it's finally doing it. You see that? So we finally got down to that layer area. And we're now starting to go down. You can see that we're starting, all those details are appearing on top of that layer. You don't want to go too far, otherwise you'll start to lose information. Okay, so that's really important to mention as well. And also here, for example, the model's bicep is actually popping out, so this garment needs to be slightly wider. You can just get your small section tool, click on that point, and you could just move it out. And that hasn't worked. That's fine, it just means there's lots of layers. So click on this one and move it out. There you go. You'll eventually find the right layer. Click on this one as well, you can move that out. So you can also sort of like arrange and sort your garments out as you go. Okay, so what's next? I'm going to add that print to this, but you know what? I'm not going to use a clipping mask, it takes ages. I'm just going to go to my swatches. And you know what? Because it's such a small bite, it actually worked quite well. Okay, there's a little bit there, but that's not the end of the world. You can't really see it from the illustration. Let's also make this gold lame, so I'm just going to select it. There we go. Okay, I think we're getting there. Oh, I haven't done any pink on this lady's trousers. So once again, let's click that item there. Let's go for the pink. There we go. Okay, once again, the problem is here, we've got an issue because I actually picked up my rib layer. As you can see, there's that red line. I'm filling the rib layer and not the color layer underneath. So I'm just going to select the rib. I'm going to go Object and then Lock Selection. And that should give me my actual layer. And then let's just go to the eyedropper tool. So click the eyedropper and then let's pick up the pink, which is that one. And you see how that works far better. Same with these ones. I'm just going to select both of those. I'm going to lock them down, which is the rib layer. And then I'm going to select these two, get my eyedropper tool, pick that up. Same for these ones here. Oops. So I've just locked those rib layers down. There we go. Okay, this is really important to mention, actually. So, um, as you can see here, we've got these two selected, and if I just simply click with the eyedropper tool like that, we actually lose the line art. So let me go back. You see how we have the line art? And I've just simply selected. I've just simply selected that pink. We lose the line art. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you want to do a little handy shortcut instead of having to go back and then obviously add the line art, all you have to do is instead of just simply clicking like that, if you hold down the Shift key. What it does is it only takes the attributes of this. So, for example, at the moment we have the, the fill and we have the line art. So at the moment this only has a pink fill and there is no line art. So if we just click it, it will take just this pink. It won't add the line art because we're taking the elements from this. However, if you hold down the Shift key with this selected and you click, what it does is it completely ignores the line art. It only selects what you're selecting. You see? So if I hold down the Shift key, it will just change the color inside and it won't change the line art, which is really handy. Let's also go for this one. There we go. 
We can also do these as well. Click. I'm just using the eyedropper tool. Where is it? Let's go for this. Great, she's looking rather weird, which is great. Uh, let's now do these. Let's go for a bit of gold lame on here. Gold lame. Ugh, that really is disgusting, that lame. Let's take these items and let's also make those gold too. Okay, I mean, essentially, I could just change. I'll show you how to change that later if you don't like the gold lame, but you can do it to all of them at the same time. Okay, I think we are pretty much done. Yeah, okay, no, just down here we have some shoes and we have some lines. So once again, that's the rib. Select, lock it down, take this element here. Let's go for that nice pink. Okay, this one's slightly higher up in layers. Select this one. Let's just go back. So we're going to command, open bracket, open square bracket, just to take it down through the layers a little bit. And it's taking a little bit of time. Ah, there we go, almost there. Just going to go up a little bit. There we go, perfect. And for some reason we've lost the line art. Might have to fiddle around a little bit. That's all part of the process. Obviously the more you do this, the more proficient you'll become. Okay, so that's that. So imagine now that I absolutely detest that gold llama and it's absolutely disgusting. What we could do is we could go online, we could find a much nicer gold llama. Images. Okay, let's find something that's a little bit softer. Okay, so this, for example, gold satin lame. Let's just simply copy that. I'm going to take it into Adobe Illustrator. Let's paste it in. I mean, it's less glitzy. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And what I'm doing is I'm just simply going to drag that into here. So you can see it's in my palette now, which is great. Now, I want to change all my gold lame at once, and I don't want to do it individually each time. It's a really handy tool. You can use the, um, what's it called, magic wand. So if you click on the magic wand, if you double click on it, you want to get, um, so, you want to make sure, you'll probably end up, when you first come into this, you'll probably see that the fill color has been selected. And to be fair, that's pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Hopefully this will work. Um, so with your magic wand, once again, just simply find it over here on the left-hand palette, double click, and then just simply go fill color, and you can maybe make that five, I guess, if you needed to. And then simply click on the gold lame. And as you can see, all of the gold lame has been selected because you've defined what it wants. You, you've asked it what to select. So the magic wand tool, anything you click, it will pick up um, anything that you've coloured or used a swatch for. It won't pick up the clipping mask, obviously, because that is not a colour, it's not a fill, it is uh, something you've saved in there or you've used clipping mask. So any of these you can actually just change. So I could decide to go, well, I want all of those gold lame, for example, um, you know, like that which is grim, but you could do it. So you can change these designs very quickly. Once you've built them and you've got your balance right on your garments, you can then just really easily go in and just simply change it to be pink or this or that or, you know, whatever you want to do. It makes things really simple. Obviously, you can add your swatches too. I mean, crikey, you know, whatever you want to do. But I'm not going to go into that too much. It just shows you how you can change it. So I've got this new gold lame that I really quite like. I've dragged it into my palette. I've then gone to my magic wand tool, which is over here. And I'm just simply clicking on the gold lame, and I'm going to go over to my swatch, my new one. I'm going to click on it, and now we have a different gold lame, okay, which is actually probably quite a lot nicer. See the difference? much nicer. So that is essentially how you would colour or add texture or print or pattern to your fashion illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. But it is all really important that you have your um, these templates or the fashion illustrations we created in part five. The way you build these is really important. So when you create your objects, you need to make sure it's fillable. Otherwise, you'll just have a whole mess like this. Okay, you need to make sure that those objects are fillable. So please watch part five carefully for that. Anyway, that's pretty much it from me for this tutorial. So it wasn't too long. And it's probably quite a fun one as well. But once again, if you want to, um, you know, if you want to create various different designs, you could just simply, let's go object, unlock all, make sure everything's unlocked. You could simply, let's select this lady here. So big selection tool, click and drag around her. You could then go control C, control V, copy and paste move her over here, for example, and cr start creating a whole brand new concept when it came to your illustrations. You know, it could be, I don't know, the top could be green instead. So it just shows you can create a range of different designs very quickly and easily once you actually have it in there. Anyway, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.